For many years, Bob Hilke piloted the Pride of Rainy Lake, a 49-passenger tour boat in Voyageurs National Park. But some of the best times he's had on the water have been in a tiny little rowboat that he built. It replicates a boat his grandfather and father used on Rainy Lake, and he used it to retrace a voyage his grandfather made back in 1905 on Minnesota's Canadian border. Well, in 1905, my grandfather Hilke, uh, with a brother, came up to Rainy Lake uh, with the idea of uh, checking it out to see if it was a place that they might be interested in doing commercial fishing. And they rented a rowboat in Rainier, Minnesota, and from there they uh, rowed almost 50 miles uh, to Kettle Falls. That's pretty much the length of the lake. Uh, they uh, decided that the lake was a good place for commercial fishing, and as it turns out, my grandfather returned with his family in, in 1908, and they never left. They made this their home, and that was his occupation for all those years. This rowboat was built in, in uh, 2008. It's 13 feet long. It uh, is uh, a lap strake uh, construction. These planks all overlap about anywhere from an inch to a little more than an inch. And they're all, the planks are all glued and riveted together with uh, a rivet uh, and a rove. This is what the rivet looks like. Um, and I pounded those through after the hole was drilled so that the head was would be countersunk a little bit. And then from the back side, the rove should not be loose like this. It, it actually, the hole is a little bit small. I don't know, I didn't have to find the right size rove, but because uh, I have larger ones too of these rivets. But this rove, would, to be proper, would be very tight on here. And as you pound, it would be driven up on here, but it would it would lock the, the planks together very tightly. And then you'd come along and snip off oh, about a sixteenth of an inch above that, and then you'd pound a head on it so that it was riveted. Planking is, is white pine, quarter sod white pine. The uh, keel and the bow stem is white oak. The gunnels um, are white oak. Uh, seats and some of the uh, other bright wood on here is all uh, mahogany, Honduras mahogany. And let's see, I think those are the woods that are in, oh there's some ash, the ashes, all the ribs are ash in the boat. We built what's called the strong back, which the boat was built on. In uh, lap strake, sometimes called clinker uh, construction, uh, the ribs are put in after the uh, the basic hull is made. Uh, whereas most boats, I think, are, are the boat, the ribs are on a form and then the planking is attached to the ribs. It always intrigued me that when, when he first came to this lake, he had, he had rowed uh, all the way to Kettle Falls with his brother. One of the things that I always thought would be pretty fun to do would be to row a boat to Kettle Falls from where I live. And by the end of the summer after finishing the boat I, I did uh, row to Kettle Falls. It was, from our house it was 39 miles and it took me 12 hours so I had to stay overnight along the way. And uh, I stayed in a cabin that belonged to a friend of mine about halfway up the lake. Uh, which was a wonderful experience. I ran into some, some tough winds. Um, which made a challenge. I had a lot of satisfaction in doing that. And as I went along, um, a lot of the, the things that, that I had uh, seen over the years uh, from motorboats and canoeing, I've canoed up that way a number of times too, um, came back. Because in rowing by myself, I, I had a lot of time to think about what I was looking at and it was fun for me to see so many of the places where my grandfather and, and, and my father had uh, experienced their part of their life on Rain Lake, the stories they had told me, the places that we'd all visited together, where my family had been going over the years, so it was a, a great experience for me to do that. And how, 
how did this boat, you see, you'd mentioned uh, some uh, little rough wind. How did the boat handle in that rough wind on the lake? This is a big lake. I was wondering, of course, uh, how it would work out. Uh, when we had our original boat, one of my father's favorite things to do after a busy day at work was to come home on a windy day and uh, go out in the big waves. Uh, and he always uh, enjoyed it, never ever tipped over. I always said that that original rowboat acted like a duck on the water. It just rode up and down on the waves. It, it, uh, and we used to see him out there doing that. I never was out in big waves as I grew up. But I found that after I built this boat, I went out trying it in the roughest days that we had that summer. And I found that what he had said was true. It, it really rode the big waves very nicely. Uh, however, on my trip to Kettle Falls, I, I had more stuff in the boat with me. Um, I'm a heavier guy than my father was. The boat itself is heavier. I didn't really know just how it would take the really roughest water that I could run into on that trip. But I did run into some very, very bad weather and, and uh, I didn't ship any water at all. Um, I just had to be careful that I played it very, very carefully as I rode up and down the waves, but I didn't have any problem. Uh, and if I had, it would have been pretty serious. It turned out to be one of the most fun things I ever did. I just loved making the boat and I've had great pleasure using it ever since.